Okay, this is Stefan, or Stephen, uh, Englishman. And uh, he's been, uh, we knew each other from a, a teacher we studied under called Master Wong about two years. We studied there for about a year. And he learned all types of different meditation practices there. And he's continued to do practices from there, and he's added other practices as well. And he'd like to share some of his uh, experiences and uh, techniques uh, regarding meditation. So, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Stepan. All right, th thanks, Tom, and thanks everybody for, for coming. So, the the topic tonight is uh, meditation. So. I want to begin with my personal connection to meditation. I started meditating at the age of 21. I picked up a book by a guy called Paul Brunton, and the book was called Find Yourself. So I read that book and I thought, oh wow, this is it, you know, this is amazing. And I was like, all like, yeah, you know, it's possible to be to be free, you know, to become a free person in this life through, through meditation. Um, so what I did is I started meditating right away, and I meditated a lot, like eight hours a day, or you know, like twelve hours in one go, like in a small closet. And there was some kind of meditation about light, so I kind of focused on like an inner light. And that made me feel like very happy, and so that went on and on and on, and brought me all the way um, to India. So at some point, I decided to go to India to go deeper uh, in that practice, and um, I did some vipassana there. I did two courses. I don't know if you if you know that vipassana is like it's a pretty intense program. You, you meditate for like 10 hours a day during 10 days uh, and you can't talk. So I did that, two of these courses. Uh, and then I kind of spinned out. It's like, it was just like too much, too much pressure and I didn't really understand anything about meditation or I didn't know how to meditate properly. So I, I just, you know, wanted to quit automatically. It's like everything was too much. I wanted to go back to to normal career, make money, you know, have a, have a wife and raise kids and all of that. And that also then didn't really work out well. And then at some point I went back to meditation. Uh, I met a Qigong master and then I continued, came back to meditation again. And yeah, and ever since I've been meditating. Uh, and also in Taiwan, I had a, a good master here, Master Wong, at the tea house. And yeah, he, he taught me a lot in two years. And after that, I, um, I quit that. And after that, I've been studying with a different master. I've been studying more Tai Chi. Um, yeah, now the inputs have been coming from different directions, like from the internet, and uh, yeah, and I've been kind of practicing just the stuff that I think is, is really, is just suitable for myself. But tonight, um, I just want to establish like the simple foundation of meditation. We can't, you know, we, we've only got half an hour, I've only got half an hour, so I can only establish like the basics of meditation. So what is meditation? By simply observing our thoughts or parts of the body, we relax and focus the mind. Meditating means being present here and now. Letting go of the past and the future, we gain understanding of the nature of our own self. Right. So it's all about being here and now, that's it. It's really simple, just letting go. It's not, it's not a doing. 
or here. This is from Zen. Zen is not some kind of excitement, but concentration on our own usual everyday routine. So in here, in this we can see that meditation isn't necessarily like a specific ritualized practice. It can be something that we do in our everyday lives. So, you know, it can be that we meditate when we're in the MRT. <coughs> you just sit in the MRT and you meditate. It just happens. And actually, I believe we do meditate, all of us, um, throughout, throughout the day. And it doesn't necessarily have to be like in a certain form. Um, this is another uh, Zen quote. For 20 years, I've sought the other. Now, letting go, I fly out of the pit. What use, oneness of mind and body? These days, I only sing la la la. That's Kesho Shogaku, 15th century. Zen poems of China and Japan. Or here, um, this one's Bruce Lee. All fixed set patterns are incapable of adaptability or pliability. The truth is outside of all fixed patterns. So I don't know, maybe we have to let that sink for a moment. The truth is outside all fixed patterns. So, truth is not are not our patterns. What are our patterns? Our patterns is that the way in which we function in life. And we normally believe we are that. We believe we are our thoughts. We believe we are that what we do. We believe we are our body. And now Bruce Lee says, no, 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 it's not that. It's outside of that. So he says we can we can see that we can see through our patterns and the idea of that is when you see through it where by seeing through it you are not that so it's it changes it's a change of perception so oh and we have one more this is the the Tao Te Ching. This is an amazing book. You can, by the way, get this on, on Amazon. <laughs> I can really recommend that. 48. In the pursuit of learning, every day something is acquired. In the pursuit of Tao, every day something is dropped. Less and less is done until non-action is achieved. When nothing is done, nothing is left undone. The world is ruled by letting things take their course. It cannot be ruled by interfering. So, this is very beautiful. This points to the core of meditation. Aren't we all about interfering with our lives, like all the time? Well, I don't know how it's for you. I know that that's how I function, you know? <laughs> Get up in the morning, what can I do? You know, what can I change? What can I do to make things better, you know? How can I fix my life? How can I get a better job? How can I get better friends? You know, all these things. and. This is saying the exact, the, the exact opposite. It's all about letting go and just letting happen. So it's not about getting somewhere or achieving something. It's the other way around. It's just dropping, dropping it. So that's very, it's counter that what we're used to. Our, I think Especially in the West as well, it's like we're very used to getting from point A to point B. It's like you're here, who are you in five years? 
what is your what's your career? You know, who are you going to be? How are you going to make your money? You know, how are you going to be this and that? You know, and this is the exact opposite. You know, the more you have, the more troubled you are. Basically, that's what the town says. And he says, well, you know, just let go, let, let go of all of it, and don't interfere. That's the way of the town, and also. Of um, the way of meditation. All right. But, okay. Now um, you see on your your the handout the benefits. Okay. This is this is a hard one because the benefits of meditation are actually too vast to even talk about. Right. You know. <laughs> it's like, and, and then you have you have all these people they. You know, these spiritual masters or whoever, they try to sell meditation, you know, and then you just put, like, they put all kinds of stuff out there that's, like, really amazing, right? Like, nowadays, we have, like, movies like The Secret or stuff like that, where they, they talk about how you can materialize things, you know, just focus, focus on that in your mind, and you can get, like, a new house, you can get a new partner and everything, you know, just imagine that and that will happen. So, meditation is not about that. Meditation is not about getting more for yourself. It's basically about uh, coming back to yourself, just being yourself, it's just being. So, building, one of the benefits would be building inner stability, uh, the inner temple. So this is a place which we all know, a place we can always access. This is who we are. You know, the thing is, how hard is it to access who we are? It's actually, it's actually all that what we don't do. <laughs> you know, if you're, you know, the way in which we function most of the day is actually running away from who we are because we think and we want to do and we want to organize and interfere. It's all that which we are actually not. To be what we are is just letting go and just being, basically. And in meditation we can build like this inner stability that we can access this place. It just becomes more familiar so you can, wherever you are, it's like you access that place. If you go shopping, you buy something, suddenly you access that place and you're like, wow, you know, this is actually okay. I don't have to be there, you know, the mind, I don't have to, you know, jump. I can just be here. So this is, and this becomes more, should become more and more stable. So it becomes easier and easier just to be with yourself. It's, it's, it's basically really simple actually. Um, awareness, mindfulness, sensitivity, inward, outward. Um, yes, that can increase um, towards outside. We might start to see more things, little things that happen. That happen. I don't know, somebody dropped a coin like 50 meters away, you might suddenly notice like little things. Or, you know, just a lady with that, you know, who needs help or just small things you might notice, whereas before maybe you did you didn't notice that as well. Um, and that's also towards inside. So we all have feelings. And the question is, how do we observe them? I believe through meditation, you actually, uh, it's like a magnifying glass. You see what is happening, but you see it even clearer. You know, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, you know. So, that's called sensitivity. You become more sensitive to what's happening. Also to what's outside, you might walk into a room and you absorb and you feel what's happening in that room. You feel 
how the people feel that live there. Stuff like that. It's not, it's not something, you know, I, I believe we should go for. Oh, I, have to, I want to become more sensitive. It's not like that. I want to become more aware. It's not like that. It's all about who we are. So I'm just saying, this, this, these are, based, in a way, these are just side effects, nice ones. Uh, finding new ways to deal with problems and patterns. So, yeah, well, I guess the nicest thing uh, to see in our lives when we learn uh, is just that problems, problems that were there before just automatically drop away. So, you know, if that happens, you know, it goes on. But the thing is, you know, different problems come. So there's always something to learn, but at least we're learning, right? We're moving on. Patience, you might be more patient when you buy something at the store. You just be with yourself so you can wait. It's okay. Um, and this is for higher levels after a few years of practice, maybe the exploring higher possibilities of consciousness. Again, this is, this is um, where it starts to get a bit more dangerous, right? Like the deeper meditators go, uh, the more nutty can get. <laughs> like, again, like this, the power of the mind, right? To see uh, how we can use our mind, you know? Suddenly, imagine you can materialize everything you want. You know, if you want to have women, or a great house, and you can just imagine that, and suddenly all these things, they happen. You know, what kind of temptation is that, right? So, you know, we, med meditators might go into that, but again, that would stop them from going along and learning about who they really are, which is, in the end, something really simple. Um, freeing yourself from pain and suffering, again, this, this will be like an ultimate goal, right? We're all, we all suffer, and yes, uh, the masters say it's possible that the suffering can stop at some point. If we just really stay with who we are. But, you know, these, these are things I wouldn't you know, want to like go for and like, yeah, you know, I have to meditate to, to, to achieve that. You know, these things, I believe, come automatically. Um, all right. And then we have the, the setbacks. Sensitivity can confuse. Yeah, this is a big part. I believe you know, most of us, we're kind of unconscious in a, in a certain way. Like, we wake up and many things are happening, but we're just not conscious of them. And now when you start meditating, this starts to open. You become more and more aware of what is really going on. And also emotions and stuff like that can seem very big. And it can seem very disturbing. Maybe someone who, I don't know, was obsessed about having cars or something can become really obsessed about getting cars. You know, that you really like, whoa, I need like hundreds of cars, right? You really go crazy about that. Uh, that can happen through meditation. And that should be a chance to look at who you really are, that you actually are functioning like that. So it's, again, it's the same thing. It's just about who we are. It's just that you can look at it from a different, different place. So that can be a bit confusing. Wrong understanding of meditation, um, following hallucinations. Um, I have experience doing that. I went to India and I did two Vipassana courses. And I, it's, it's a meditation with, with closed eyes. And I had hallucinations at some point, you know, like burning in hell, 
know, I was sitting there like for hours. It just like felt like someone's whipping me, you know? And I was burning there. And I was just caught in that and just felt like hell, you know, it felt terrible. And then I went back to my cabin and I just started crying. It was just terrible, you know, so much pressure. You know, and later, many years later in Taiwan, I, I talked to, to Master and, and he said, well, you know, the re reason why that really happened was because you really didn't understand what meditation is all about. Meditation is not about pushing yourself. It's not about doing that. It's not about being able to stay in one posture for, you know, 10 hours a day. So if you really push that, and then you go into all these hallucinations, and you really believe in them, and you think that's what you are, then it, it, it goes down the wrong path. Falsified ego developing a spiritual, yeah, the spiritual superego is what I talked about before. That's, and that's huge, right? <laughs> oh man, it's like, because it's so weird, it's because that what we are, what we really are, is so natural. <coughs> you know, you can take like any lady on the street who just sells fruits, whatever, and she can be more herself or more with herself without knowing anything about any meditation or, you know, and all these concepts can really, really get into your way. You know, if there's a person there that wants to grab that because it becomes more and more lucrative, it becomes more and more juicy, you know? So suddenly, you know, you want, you want to be like this amazing person with this amazing awareness or whatever. Even, yeah, all this, this Buddhist stuff, like you want to be compassionate, you want to love everybody, you want to be one with everybody, all that stuff, it just becomes more and more nutty, right? <laughs> so that, that's kind of a, a setback. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's so weird, right? So that's why, that's why spirituality and all that stuff, I don't think it's necessarily actually like this amazing key to truth, right? Because it can also like, as long as there's somebody there who wants, it's just every, you flip around everything and it just doesn't go anywhere anymore. So, you know, just have to be careful about that. Results take, take time. Um, meditation is an Eastern thing and Eastern things in general take more time. Just like Eastern medicine, you know, you can't just take it and the pain's gone. It might take a few weeks. Um, and the same thing for meditation, it might, you know, you might feel something like right away, something really amazing. Some people feel something like right away, they meditate and after one, half an hour, ten minutes, whoa, <laughs> epiphany, you know, it's amazing. Uh, but it doesn't have to be like that. You know, sometimes you just don't feel anything, you know. And that's why people in the West maybe, they want to have something, they want results, they want to get somewhere, and then nothing happens. Like, dude, what's happening here? I want to see some results. And all, and all you're doing in that is you're just trying to grasp, grasp something, and that itself completely uh, lets you forget about all that you want. It's just it's really simple. All right, perfect. Okay, so let's talk about the, the preparation. So how can we actually meditate? First of all, the place. The place should be quiet. Um, turn off your cell phones or put them on, on fiber alert. Um, maybe close the door. Uh, you know, if you live with roommates, you, you maybe put out a sign so you don't want to be disturbed. 
Um, fans, air cons, well, I was told, I was told by, by a great master we should turn these off uh, in meditation. I never thought that was really great. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't, especially in Taiwan, like, it's so humid and it's so hot, so I, you know, I don't want to be sitting in my own sweat and be like, okay, I'm meditating here, you know, so, you know, I have to keep off the fan, I, I don't, <laughs> you know, I do meditate, you just, you just want to relax, right? And as Tom said just before, he told me, well, you know, I think it should be, it should be fun, it should be pleasurable as well. And, you know, there's truth in that, you know? Because actually being ourselves shouldn't be like, that's not, that's not like something that's really, should be really hard. It's just natural, just natural. All right, the floor, we use, uh, we can use two mats. That's maybe a good way to go about it. Uh, I personally don't like two hard mats, maybe not tatami mats, maybe a bit softer. Straw mats are, are pretty good. Uh, I bought a cushion in the, the Ola Mart. That's not too soft, not too hard. Yeah, just something you can feel comfortable on. So it's also good to have a second pillow, a second cushion that you can sit on. So the, the back's really straight. So yeah, I don't think it's necessarily great to just sit on, on one mat and then, you know, it's, I find it kind of harder to keep your spine, spine really straight. So that's, it's just good to have an extra support, a, a second, second mat. Uh, no disturbance from others, simple, tidy, and well-ventilated environment. Yeah, the, the, the air should be good, you know, just a place in which you feel, can feel comfortable uh, and keep it tidy. Um, I think it's not great if you have like a meditation room with like too much stuff inside. Like from point of view of like chi flow, say if you have like loads of pencils and books and you know like stuff from work, it's like the energy like goes all over. It's just like you can't relax. Just being in that room, just looking at, at all of that mess, it's not relaxing in the first place. So that's why it's good to just keep a really simple, clean, and nice room. Uh, maybe you have some incense there. And yeah, and you just sit down. Um, food. Oh, <laughs> 10 minutes, time's running out. Avoid hot foods, meat, and garlic. All right, I'm not tell telling here anyone what to do and what to eat. It's, not, it's up to you. There are great meditators out there that eat meat. There are great meditators out there that eat a whole lot of garlic. I'm just, I just want to share my experience with, especially with meat and garlic. Garlic, I believe, is the the worst. <laughs> it's the worst, really. Um, I was told at some point, don't eat garlic. And I was like, okay, okay. I stopped eating garlic. And later, I ate garlic and I just noticed, like, whoa, it's like really this cloud just comes over you. Do you know that? It's, it's so strong. It's, once you stop, you can actually you can notice what, what it really does to you. Garlic some some acid stuff, you know, and it, it messes with your concentration. It changes the way the way your mind works. It's, it's stronger than meat. Um, meat, I just made an experiment lately because I read on the internet that meat, eating meat, you can actually have nightmares. I was like, oh, all right. I'll check it out. So I stopped eating meat and boom, like I didn't have nightmares anymore. I was like, wow, that's amazing. And and now that I when I think about it, it kind of makes sense because you know, do we really know where the animals come from to eat? Do we know their lives? 
Well, actually, we don't. But you know, once you kind of look into that stuff, you might find that uh, these animals probably didn't have a good life. They probably had a horrible life, and they probably had a horrible death and a lot of suffering. And that was in their system at the time they died. And then you eat that, and it's in you. And, well, yeah, you might have nightmares. <laughs> you know, that kind of makes sense. Um, sex modest, modest practice of sexuality is recommended. Okay. Drugs, any kinds of drugs harm the practice. Um, yes, cigarettes. Uh, don't take heroin, it doesn't help. <laughs> um, alcohol, I think alcohol can be okay. Just, you know, not too much. Some alcohol here and there. As long as, as long as we're still focused, you know, the, the mind can be focused. Even, even if you drink a lot of alcohol, you can still be focused, you can still be careful. There's a thing, you know, even in martial arts, there are masters that do like the drunken style and all of that. <laughs> it's kind of similar. I, I found alcohol not to be too annoying. Um, social small talk. Um, and getting lost in daily activities would harm the practice. Well, you know, what, what, are, what, what do I even mean by daily activities, right? But small talk, yeah, I think that can disturb, you know? If your mind just goes all over, you start talking badly about other people, you start comparing yourself and all of that stuff, wouldn't help meditation. How long should we meditate? How long should we practice between three minutes and six hours <laughs> daily according to your situation? So yeah, I mean, this is, this is an invitation. I, you know, everybody has to know for themselves, you know, if you want to do it, and if you want to check it out, if you want to try, I think, you know, maybe you can benefit something if you just do three minutes, why not? Just sit down, do nothing for three minutes, just be with yourself. And then in time maybe you can increase, you can do more if you want, you know. But I, I don't think it makes sense to like meditate uh, 10 hours a day, like, you know, like playing tennis or something like that, playing golf. You know, does it help if you play 10 hours a day? Maybe not. You know, maybe things just get too tied up, it gets too serious and too nutty. That's why I think it's maybe good to say, okay, you know, just keep it, you know, six hours max. Yeah. Um, techniques. What do I have? Thirty seconds to explain this. <laughs> <laughs> cool. oh. Now I have twenty. Okay, I'll have to do some over time. Um, there's this lady here on this picture. Uh, maybe you can see that. How to sit down. This is the, the seven point meditation practice. So the seven points are, I'll just go through it as fast as possible. Number one, legs. So legs crossed, that's great. She's in a lotus position. position. If you can do that, that's great. Don't overdo it, don't break your legs. <laughs> uh, I think it's good to feel comfortable with your legs, you know? It's okay if you just sit down on a chair, that can be okay too. Um, the spine should be straight though. This is very important. I go to the temple almost every day uh, to meditate and I see people there, some of them are sleeping. <laughs> That's okay, they go to the temple to sleep. But um, if you want it, meditate properly to keep you know you need to keep the spine straight because the energy moves through the spine um where am i shoulders relaxed uh, open but relaxed chin tucked in a bit not too pride and not like sleeping or depressed um the tongue touches the upper top of the mouth gently. The eyes are either closed or open. That depends on the, uh, the meditation technique. But yeah, um, it's good to respect open eye meditation. I think it's always a good place to go. 
especially when the mind goes just the whole hallucination thing, like I was saying before, the whole hell thing, just open your eyes. You know, just like, okay, just look at what is in front of you. Um, what else? Hands, um, just like the lady here, left hand on top, and the thumbs like that. That's, that's a great way to hold your hands. Well, I don't do that <laughs> because my arms are really long, so I just let them hang. So I don't know. You know, you have to find your own way, but it's it's good to stick to these points. All right, that's that. And right, closing, final, the technique <laughs> in ten seconds. So what we can do is we can sit in the seven point uh, posture and then we can close our eyes and then we just count the breathing. You breathe in, you breathe out, that's one. Do it again, two. Just relax, observe the thinking, see what you're thinking. No future, no past, stay here. That's all you do. And you go up to 10, and when you're at 10, you go backwards again. 10, 9, 8. And in that, in the counting as well, you can see if you're really with the meditation. Because if you go off like on, on, on these, this, this thinking trip, like, oh, oh, I think I need to do that still, and, blah, 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 and then you forget counting. Well, I was at 4. What happened? <laughs> so you just follow that, your breath like that. And you focus, you focus on your breath only and you feel it. You, you feel the breath in your, your nose. And you just focus on that. Up and down, up and down. And you just, yeah, that's how you can practice. That's a simple uh, Zen technique. That's a good way to start. All right. Thanks for listening. Thank you.